Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here with another tutorial. Well, this time we're in After Effects and we're gonna be breaking down this effect. All right, so sit back, let's get ready, and let's jump right in. So the focus of this tutorial is going to teach you guys how to handle depth of field with your shot camera. And this will probably be the first time on my channel that we explore three-dimensional space, or in this case, 2.5D. It's not true 3D. However, we are creating a camera and we are replicating a 3D environment. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to start a new composition, 1920 by 1080. Let's name it depth. 24 frames a second is fine, and I want it to be a duration of five seconds. In the new composition, let's create a solid. Black is fine. On the solid, using FX console, I'm gonna add a gradient ramp. We're gonna switch this ramp to a radial ramp. And then what I wanna do is I wanna have the inner circle way off in the side right over here. Outer circle way over there. Let's switch the inner circle color to a very, uh, let's do violet. And then I want a black color here. Now this is still too bright, so instead of just altering the color, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna blend with the original since we used a black solid, like so. Then I wanna create a text. Let's just name this text. We're gonna use the align tool here to line it up in the center, and then we're gonna flip it to 3D. Press P, let's separate the dimensions so the Z axis is separated out of the X and Y. And then we're gonna duplicate that layer, and then we're gonna go ahead and Double click on the layer, that way we can modify the text here, and we're gonna name this one Depth. Now, the font I'm using is Bevis New, bold. I'm also using the Fox Bold, and I'm making sure it's all caps. You can do any font for this, by the way, it doesn't matter. What I wanna do, I want this effect to start with text, and then fall into Depth. So to do that, I wanna take my Depth layer, and I wanna move it towards the camera. We haven't set one yet, but let's just envision this being the camera. And I wanna move it up by negative 1500, like so. Now, I also wanna create a, the camera itself. It's very important, we have a one node camera, 35 millimeters, and let's go shot cam for a name. Enable depth of field, and let's hit okay. I use 35 millimeter camera because that's a nice and wide angled camera, as you guys can see here. Now, one thing is I never control my cameras on the camera layer, and this is another reason why I went one node. This process will work with a two node camera, but it's gonna be simplified with a one node camera. So I'm gonna create a new layer, a null object. I'm gonna set that null object to 3D and let's name it camera controls. And then I wanna parent my camera to camera controls. Let's hit P and let's separate the dimensions. So now what we have is if I turn off my depth layer, we have the text at the center we have our depth field on. We're gonna modify that here in a few. And if I move the camera controls in the Z axis like so, we're gonna have movement. So let's reset this. Uh, for the, this effect, I'm gonna to go to the, let's just go to the 12 frame mark. And I'm gonna set a keyframe on the Z position. Let's move forward to about the two second mark and we can move these keyframes here in a little bit. And I'm gonna to go to negative 1500 like so. Let's turn depth back on and you'll notice depth takes the place of text. Now our depth of field isn't really set properly even though we have it turned on. So we still see text back there but we're going to use a couple of expressions to fade it back. And we're gonna, I'm going to introduce a new expression to you guys for the first time on this channel. It's called the ease expression. It's a mathematical operation. Really easy to use. Basically it'll just transpose values from another layer and use it on this layer. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started creating that effect. To set this up, let's smooth out these keyframes. And then what I actually wanna do here is, so we're going 1500 frames back. I actually wanna go about 1200 of those frames right away. And what's gonna happen here is, so we're gonna shoot to negative 1200 and then the last 300 frames we fall back is nice and smooth and fallen off. However, we do have an issue that we need to pay attention to. I wanna go to the value graph to make sure that as it comes down, so what I'm doing right here is I'm switching this graph up to change the speeds. I just want to control the speeds a little bit better. 
That's a little too fast. So I have it ease out of the stop position. So ease out of the stop position. So it accelerates up right here is its fastest point. Then it's going to slam into position at the negative 1200, but continue moving past it. And then it's just going to ease into a stop position. And this is the effect we want. Okay, let's come out of the graph editor. So we have these keyframes set up now. Now, the next thing I wanna do before I add depth of field is I want this text layer to act like it's falling off in the distance and the light's disappearing. But before I do that, I do wanna write this expression. So let's go ahead. So I'm gonna hit U. So I only have the Z position up on the camera controls. And then on the text layer, I'm gonna hit T for opacity and we're gonna write an expression. We're gonna, before I write anything, I wanna set a variable here and we're gonna call this CC Z underscore Z, or we could just do CCZ without the underscore, equals pick whip to the Z position. And then I'm going to go ahead and set a semicolon. Now we're gonna use the ease operation here. So we're gonna try type in ease. And then I wanna type in CCZ so we can plug in that variable here, comma. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take uh, the negative, let's say negative 400 point here to negative 1500 and then I want to do zero to 100 but leave this will work and then I'll explain what's happening here in a second yep that's exactly what we want I actually don't want to go all the way down to uh zero here so let's actually see let's say 33 there you go it's still there and so now it looks like it's falling back because it's using the, is the actual camera movement now to drive the opacity change. So it's one to one, so it looks natural. So what's going on here is I basically have set an expression that says, hey, I wanna take the Z position change. I want to take the values in the parameter, I'm setting a blind essentially, an upper blind of negative 400 and a lower blind of negative 1500. And then in, those, in that realm, as we go from A to B, I want to change opacity from 100 to 33. Now, the reason why this is in reverse is because we're working in negative values and we're actually pulling away from 100. Keep in mind that there's already 100% opacity on this layer. So that drives this effect for us. All right, let's add in a little bit of depth now. So on the shot cam, hit AA to bring up our camera options. And uh, we're going to leave fast rectangle for now, but I want to open up our aperture huge. So if you've ever used a camera before, the wider an aperture, the more light gets let in. If you're shooting in usually in a higher aperture and you're able to actually preserve your exposure, you start to generate what's called a depth of field or a shallow depth of field, I should say. This is the effect we're replicating here by opening up our aperture in pixel. The default in this case, if I come over here and I hit reset, is 25.3 pixels. Okay, it's a very, very narrow, it's like this big right here. So we wanna open up that aperture so we let more light in and will allow us to soften everything up. So let's just, like I said, let's go to 250. That's a little insane, let's go to 200. 200's fine. And I actually wanna increase the blur level to how much it's gonna blur by about 200. Okay, that's insane too, so let's go to 150. The focus distance doesn't need to change. We can alter the focus distance to add a lens breathe effect, which we will here in a little bit. But let's take a look at this now. And now we have this depth of field, but there's one thing that's missing in the movement, and that's our motion blur. So let's turn motion blur on. I wanna add motion blur across the board. And there we go. Well, we don't need depth up yet. Maybe we turn depth on right about here. So I'm gonna add an animator to my text. Come over here, I'm gonna go to the animate arrow. I'm gonna add an opacity animator. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity all the way to zero. Let's open up the range selector, open up advanced. We're gonna randomize it. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna set a keyframe on the start and then just move over a little bit. Let's go to 100. And then I'm gonna smoothen those frames out. Let's take a look at that. And we can slow that down a little bit. Perfect. So now what we have is we have depth falling back, but also turning on at the same time. Cool. Now I mentioned earlier, I kind of want to add a lens breathe effect. So we're going to do that right now. To do that, hit AA again on our shot cam. 
And let's go to our focus distance. Now there's a couple ways we can use an expression like we did the opacity of the text layer. But in this case, I'm just gonna use keyframes because I only want one, one lens breathe, but you could set triggers. So like, hey, at this value, fire the lens breathe. At this value, fire the lens breathe. We're not gonna do it in this case. It's a really complex expression that might take over this tutorial and I don't want that to happen. So let's just come in here. And what I want is as soon as it settles and as it's moving right here, I wanna set a keyframe. Let's set another, another keyframe here. Let's go in the middle and let's set the focus distance really high so that it puts the text into focus. And then let's smoothen out these keyframes and let's take a look. Okay, that's way too fast, so let's slow this down. There you go. Now, a typical lens breathe wouldn't occur right here. Um, this is like bad camera work, but uh, it's a nice little added effect, just a little flare to your shot. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys like this tutorial, like this way of going, if you learned something from this tutorial, I wanna hear that as well too. I love doing these videos guys, so be sure to like and also subscribe to the channel. Take a look around. Every Friday, my goal is to release a five minute tutorial or walkthrough in After Effects for you guys, nice, quick and easy. I released a sliding glass effect tutorial last Friday. I'm gonna link that in the end screen, so make sure you click on that, and I'll see you in the next video. Tell, 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 tell.